lies were told to me. <laughs> okay, great. Got it, okay. Can everyone see that? Yes, you're all good? Awesome. So this is my presentation, uh, Tales from the Ridge or the Death of Perfectionism as I am calling it. Cause um, you know, what's, I'm gonna take my mask off. We, we, we're allowed to, I'm vaccinated. I'll, I'll bring out my vaccine card later. Um, but I decided to be overdramatic in my naming of my presentation. So yeah, The Death of Perfectionism by Adele Rankin. That's me, I'm Adele Rankin in case you didn't know. So for uh, the senior projects, we had to have a goal. What was my goal? My goal was to write and publish a collection of short stories. Did I accomplish this goal? Not, not really, not, not really at all. Um, so let's start out with a few FAQs. What was my senior project? Wrote a collection of short stories, called it Tales from the Ridge. Cool, can I read? No, you cannot read them. If you want to read them, too bad. You can wait two or so years, then you can buy them from me. I'll give some people a discount. Um, I only wrote the first draft of everything. Why did I only write the first draft? We'll get to that. So my process, yeah. Step one was just coming up with the idea. What is the idea? Tales from the Ridge takes place in a town called Redleaf Ridge. Redleaf Ridge falls under the quirky small town trope, similar to Twin Peaks, but with like a lot more proven supernatural elements like ghosts, psychics, mysterious disappearances, uh, time loops, uh, dreams, uh, curses, all that good stuff. Although eventually I want Redleaf Ridge to become like an existent universe, like worth like podcasts, shows, movies, books, sh novels, short stories, like maybe an album or something. I don't know, that, that's stupid, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I do wanna like create a shared universe. I decided to start with eight short stories because that's a little less ambitious. Um, so step two is the stories. I'm not gonna read out my summaries of the stories. I wrote little like elevator pitches up for all of them, but honestly, none of them are great at describing the stories because it's like very complex. But basically what you need to know, eight stories all share storying like high school age characters, except for I think one. Um, and they're all kind of interconnected because they all take place in this town. And you know, there's some characters that just like weave in between the different stories. So yeah, and they all have fun little names. Step three, oops, I'm supposed to do research for this project. Part of the senior project is doing research. And I did research after remembering about a quarter way in that I was supposed to do it. So I read books just like I was supposed to. One of these books is called Hungry Hearts, which I had already read, but I got myself a copy. I read it again. And it's a collection of short stories set in a small town, all interconnected like I wanted to do, except for theirs are all centered around food. It's a good book. I would definitely recommend it. Some of the stories are better than the others, but that's because they're written by a bunch of different authors. If they're all written by the same author, they're all strong. Anyway, <laughs> um, at the beginning of the project, they were like the stories that I wanted them all to feel part of the same universe and all these stories felt part of the same universe. I also read a book called Writing Fiction, which I think is a college textbook, but maybe it's not a college textbook. It looks like a textbook to me. Um, my cousin slash mom's cousin slash how do familial relations work anyway is a creative writing professor. She sent me some like books on craft a while back and this is one of them. I read it. I think it was actually really interesting for being a book on craft because sometimes they're just like mind numbingly boring, but this one actually had like excerpts from like stories and then you'd be like, Let's think about all the different like elements in this. So I, it was an interesting enough read for me to finish it. So that's what matters. <laughs> Step four, have you been writing? So no, basically what I did was write two of the stories fake haunted in the real treasure in the fall semester. And then there were college applications among other things, schoolwork, I made a movie, like I was still trying to get my driver's license. I'm still trying to get my driver's license. If anyone knows like hacks to get your driver's license quickly, hit me up. Um, I procrastinate a lot and I procrastinate a lot in writing specifically because I am a perfectionist in my writing. Step five, let's forget I have sunglasses on. Let, let's talk about perfectionism. So hi, I, I like to be perfect. That doesn't always work when you're on a time crunch. By the time I got to the second semester, I knew publication was like completely off the table for being part of this. There's a lot of work that goes into getting published and I did not have time to put in that work. At this point, I'd also say getting published this year, which was my backup goal is 
pretty off the table as well, just because of how my revision schedule's going. But I wanted to at least finish all eight stories. I made myself a schedule, three days to finish a story, one day to take a break. After finishing each story, I could reward myself with something I had written down in my notes app. And I got it done. This was a schedule that actually worked for me, like setting aside specific time and then also like having rewards for finishing things. And so those six stories took me one to two months to complete. I didn't do the math and I won't do the math, but they're all first drafts, but they're all okay. They're all readable. And that's, I think, what's important in a first draft is just making something that you're okay reading again when you revise it. So step six, learn. Most important part of any project is you learn something from it. So here's my advice to all of you, artist to artist. I assume a lot of you are artists, you go to Griffin. Um, you can talk a big game about your ideas, but they don't mean anything if you don't put in the work. Just sit down and start creating and your first effort won't be good. But if you keep working and keep putting effort into it, eventually you'll make something you like and that's all that really matters. So yeah, thank you. That was my inane rambling. I hope you all enjoyed. Hey everybody, we have a few minutes for questions. If anyone here has questions, please uh, raise your hand. And also if you're in the Zoom Hello. and you have questions, go ahead and just uh, keep muted and put it in the chat. Go ahead and put it in the chat. I see uh, Lawrence, Lawrence has a question. Stopping yeah. share. Yep, I can do that. <laughs> Hi, yes. Yeah, very good question. So the questions were, for those of you on Zoom who I assume didn't hear, um, what inspired me to write like a collection of interconnected short stories and how was my project advisor, like how did my project advisor help me during this time? I should take my sunglasses off. Hi, you can see my face now. Um, so I guess my main inspiration for like, I just, I knew I wasn't gonna write a novel because I don't have the time in my life to write a novel. So I thought short stories was gonna be easier. And then I wanted to tie them all together in some way because I always think it's interesting to just have like the little mysterious element of like, does that mean something? And then it does mean something later. I just, and as to how my project advisor was helping, my project advisor was Jack and Jack is an amazing writer an amazing teacher and just like very supportive. So I got a lot of help from them on like the front of like fleshing out my ideas and like kind of getting motivated to do the work and like just general writing advice. And so thank you, Jack. And yeah, question answered. Ooh. Um, I am in the revision process, so I am having people read the stories for me, tell me what they like, tell me what they don't like, tell me like what areas can be expanded because I was going to like print it out, but it's not enough pages for it to be like a respectable thing to print out. Like if you, if you show up with 30 pages, everyone's like, that's not, that's not anything. So I'm, I'm trying to beef it up a little more. So I have my parents looking at it. I have a, another of the senior project presenters looking at it. I have like friends looking at it. If anyone wants to be a beta reader for me, you can, you can contact me about that. And I might say no, but I might say yes. So Well, I always knew like I wanted it to be in like a weird small town because I just think that's like such a fun conceit, like the town where like you go to visit there and like there's like some ghost and everyone's like, oh, cool. All right. Normal Tuesday. And you're like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not it. That's not a normal Tuesday. So then when I was developing the characters, I wanted to create characters that kind of 
like I love creating characters and I like making them feel like like people that you would just like meet somewhere like and then be like oh okay like I'll just talk about a few of my favorite characters from one of the stories fake haunted are Phoebe and Nick and they're really fun to write because um they have the whole like Mulder Scully like one of them is like ghosts are real and here's why another one is like ghosts are not real I mean Mulder and Scully is aliens I know what X-Files is about but um <laughs> yeah it's it's just like w the way I create characters is I just I start with like who would be an interesting person to put in this scenario like who's gonna have the most fun with the um concept I'm creating here and then I just start building on that character and then also I'm like who would have the least fun with the concept I'm creating here and then I put them in that situation because I think that's fun conflict it's important for writing yeah. thank you guys <laughs>